Well, how's it going today, folks? I'm Brad Perdon, and welcome back to the Brad Shack. Today, uh, we're going to take a quick look at uh, Bradford John's Vesuvius. Uh, if you watched the last video, you'll see that I went for my first real ride on this machine. Like, I'd driven it around the yard and I drove it from town to home one time, but never played with it. So, uh, while John was out of camp, he gave me permission to take it uh, out for a cruise and let Georgia go for her first ride of the season on her sled. Uh, D850 and uh, there was a couple small issues with Vesuvius um, you know they were known to John and and uh, well I figured since he let me go for a ride on his machine I'd uh, haul it in the shop and and see what we could figure out for him so uh, let's take a quick look here um, also by the way I did film or record the uh, disassembly of this machine when I first brought it in but you know it's just pulling panels off of, uh, an XM series ski do so uh, pretty straightforward I think there's like four little bolts four little screw type six six little screw bolts there screw bolt fucking fastener deweys and that's it all the panels are off so uh, you know, no big loss. Um, I also recorded uh, about an hour. Ah, uh, pretty boring. About an hour worth of vacuuming because uh, Rapper John likes to take this thing through cattails and trees and sticks and grass. And so the whole underside of this thing is just covered in fluff and fucking sticks. And so uh, if you watch this, John, you're welcome. Um, Anyway, let's take a look. So, the first issue, and you would have seen in uh, the riding video if you watched it there. And John always said that this machine liked to pull to the left. Um, and it's quite significant on the road um, or on pack trail. Like, you've got to keep firm pressure on the, on the left handlebar, otherwise she'll just take off on you. And uh, actually, when we got home from the ride, I let go of the handlebar to see if it would turn in the driveway on its own. And if I was going faster, it would have. Uh, it was quite significant. So, uh, check the tow angle. And uh, she were towed in an inch. Uh, spec on this is supposed to be towed out according to BRP or ski -Doo. Uh, it's supposed to be towed out an eighth. I was always taught with most skidoos an eighth to a quarter is fine out. So uh, it was, you know, an inch over an inch of wrong toe. So um, I also recorded when I straightened that. But uh, well, I thought I did anyway. I thought I recorded quite a bit of shit there the other day. But uh, this camera. When the SD card is full, it doesn't warn you or anything. And the little red light on top that flashes when it's recording, it continues flashing. So uh, when you look at the camera, it looks like it's still recording, but it's not. So that's what happened to that footage. But anyway, what you want to do to set your toe angle, make sure your handlebars are straight. Okay. Like good and straight. Uh, other people may disagree. What I like to do is you'll call this your center pivot. Okay. I'll measure back this way. And this is assuming that you got skis like right here. This and this are a straight line. Some skis, you know, they taper in or they taper out. That one's a little harder to measure, but these ones here, they're nice and straight, so I take measure to a point here measure to the same distance forward so that your cross measurements are the same distance from your pivot okay and then to adjust loosen your cinch nut lock nut whatever the hell you want to call it and there's one 
up on the back side right up in there too now you don't want to adjust one side without looking at what the other side is doing like what where the other side is adjusted to because when you're all said and done you don't want to have see how I got basically four threads one two three four so I got basically four threads on this side I want to make sure I end up with the same amount of threads on this side you don't want one adjusted more than the other in order to achieve your measurement because then you're not going to be straight on the bars okay so you got to play with usually you got to adjust both just a little bit and then you keep measuring distance here to the other same spot on the other ski in front until your front measurement is an eighth of an inch bigger than your back measurement an eighth to a quarter and that is how you end up towed out when your front measurement is an eighth to a quarter greater than your rear measurement and you end up with the same amount of threads on both of your tie rods and you're usually bang on if not something is the matter something is either bent or someone's had your tie rod off and they don't they didn't start threading it on the inner at the same time as the outer you know there, there's different ways you end up with with uh, crooked steering but if you if you're not straight on the bars when you got the same amount of threads on either tie rod end normally something's bent or something's different but we got that adjusted so that's decent the other issue if you've seen the video the riding video um it was going beep 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 beep, beep and it was saying park brake across the gauge cluster you couldn't see it in the video but uh, right across here it was saying park brake park brake and it was beeping at me well normally these machines if you see how there's a little brake switch there uh, Okay. Well, if that brake switch, when that brake switch is open, when you pull the brake handle, when that brake switch is open, it turns on your brake lights. Well, on these XM, XS, uh, maybe even the XPs, I'm not sure, uh, all the way up to the fourth gens, that comes down and it tees off back to your brake light. And it goes to your ECM. Now, if the ECM sees that you are on the throttle at the same time as the brake for either three or five seconds, something like that, if it sees that you're on the brake and the throttle at the same time, it it throws that code saying park brake. It thinks that you got your park brake engaged or something. So this guy, it snapped off. I don't know if it was already broken when John got the sled, the, the park brake switch here. But it was either broken when he got it or it broke shortly after. And we kind of half ass glued it on there. And uh, in the video I did say that I thought it was the park brake switch that was throwing that code. And so when I got back here, sure enough this guy was just dangling. So... Um, one of the little tabs is missing and half of the second tab is missing so we got her kind of i don't know I, I just threw a fucking zip tie on it it seems seems quite sturdy now so uh and uh when i did that i threw the uh the boot the intake boot i threw it on with the sensor plugged in the sensor and I plugged in uh, the gauge 
and I fired it up and uh, lifted the track, spun the track for uh, you know 10 or so seconds and there was no code so I'd say park brake switch fixed, steering fixed like I said, I vacuumed, you know, fuck tons of fluff. It was just packed back in there. So that's all fixed. That's all good. Nice and clean. Um, the one other thing I was going to do, John keeps talking about this. We bought, he bought a Deco XTX belt for this machine. Road distributing, not sponsored, but uh, decent place to get shit. Um, hasn't put it on yet, and he keeps saying he wants to put it on here. While this belt is still good enough to be kept as a spare, so I'm gonna throw this belt on. Um, remember when you throw in a new belt. You gotta break it in. You can't just jump on the fucking thing, you know? Um, you gotta break them in. Opinions vary. You know, I usually call it 50, 60 clicks on on your snowmobile's odometer. Um, 50, 60 clicks, or, you know, 35, 40 miles if you're America. And, uh, you know, 50 60 clicks with uh, you know, don't be too rough on it, but you do want to run it through your uh, full rpm range, but Don't do any extended pulls or you know really hard wicked launches on it or anything You know nice smooth acceleration, you know go for just a nice little trail ride or something 50 60 clicks never had a problem so the first thing on these machines if you're unfamiliar is you should have a little mess of tools here so the ones you're gonna need is this guy and this guy so we'll take those two there's an allen key on the one side of this tool, it's an Allen key, and uh, you're, that's for loosening your sheath. But to get the old belt off, the first thing that we're gonna do this this Allen key and this sheath you use that for setting deflection. We'll do that next. But you take this the threaded side, and she screws in right here. This hole in the bottom of the sheath. Now, as it screws in, that pushes the helix in, allowing your clutch plates to separate, giving you slack in the belt. Okay. Screwed in there fairways. So you got you can just no fighting with it. We're back in the day, change the belt. You gotta fuck it wrestle one side over and then fucking spin it off yeah. so, there you go out she comes now well i guess you wouldn't see that very well but then i just walk it off right like once you got it down here take one side just kind of turn it I'm not left-handed. Should have been holding the camera with my left. But anyway, off she comes. Now is a good time to inspect the inside of your clutches. Make sure there's nothing, you know, sticky or big fucking ridges worn into it or nothing. Should be nice and smooth, nice and clean. Yeah. Check your primary out. Everything feels decent. 
it's not sticky or dirty so we'll go ahead and continue some guys like to give their cl clutches uh, a good clean I mean you know you got the belt out of the way and everything you might as well right but we're not going to because these guys are exceptionally clean these skidoos the new ones their uh, their belt guard does a really good job of keeping stuff out of there so now you know you can take your new belt and you know, check it for size you know if you're not buying a ski -doo. oh you gotta buy a ski -doo belt yeah. I've always liked Aiko they're decent I mean you know we've got the same size going on here there this same width the ribs on this decor they're thicker eh? they seem like but uh, same width. Yeah. So I remember belts have arrows on them. That points the direction of rotation. Okay. They got arrows. Follow the fucking arrows. So. Come down in here. Just go on kind of something like that ish. And make sure you smash your knuckles around a little bit too. You ain't you ain't working on things properly if you don't smash your knuckles around. Get one side in. New belt is a lot stiffer than the old one, so you know, might be a little harder to get back in. You might have to open the clutches up a little more. There you go. Now, if she's in, what we'll do, I like to spin the belt so that it doesn't just get pinched in there as you're loosening this guy. See what I mean? As you're loosening, you spin it, and it doesn't get uh, doesn't get all bound up in there as bad. I'll take this guy out of there. can see that our deflection is quite a bit off. See how um, the base of the ridge, let me see that, the base of the ridge is above the rim of the, the clutch. Basically you can see that all the way around, it's, it's protruding. You don't want that. It's real tight down here. See how when I turn over the clutch, it's actually turning the belt. So that means you're not gonna idle. <laughs> and if you do, it's just gonna be rubbing away on the inside of that new belt. And look at how much it's sticking out here. You can see the fibers. So now this is where coming uh change belt deflection comes into play what we're gonna do and now we're gonna loosen this guy sound key here and this sheet should be if I remember correctly reverse threaded so lefty tighty righty loosey 
and you got these this is your tool okay? and if you see the tool can hook right in there like that there you go that way for lefty tidy righty loosey okay or I don't know I guess it can go there too so anyway what we're gonna do and now we're going to loosen it so we're gonna go tidy direction That'll allow your belt to come out to be pinched as far out as possible. Now, as we go the opposite way, lefty tighty, you'll notice the belt will start to fall down into the into the clutch, and we want to allow it to fall until the base of the rib is flush with the rim of the clutch. Okay, so we're gonna go lefty tighty. Now we'll watch this fall down into the clutch. See the thread starting to fall down in there? clutch and see where the belt is resting. And roll it over a few revolutions there. And now you'll see we're almost there. We're just protruding just a bit. So we're gonna go lefty tighty just a little bit more. Lefty tidy, just a little bit more. Roll it over. Down you go. Took a hard fall there, guys. You all right? Lefty tidy, just a fucking hair more. Oh, down you went again. So, now if you look, the base of the ribs is right flush with the outer edge of the sheath here. Now I'm going to take your tool here and tighten this Allen key back up. too tight just a little bolt there you go and then you see now when the clutch spins over it's not spinning 
the belt or the secondary. And uh, John have himself a good spare here. It's not cracking or checked anywhere. It's not delaminating. Uh, yeah. But uh, I've also read, I don't really like the way they store their spares. Because I've read you're not supposed to you're not supposed to bend these belts like you know backwards like that like see how the inner one the inner fold is bent opposite way that it goes on the machine it's supposed to bend this way not this way so I was told you're not supposed to bend them that way so we're not gonna put that on there but uh, anyway there's the clutch how to adjust your clutch on these uh, machines and uh, we got brake switch problem fixed steering fixed nice and clean uh, reassemble it and that's it so yeah well, we'll start with uh, Start with putting these fucking tools away, I suppose. That's always a good start. Okay. Take this guy, take your little hook there, and it goes down in the slot. Down the side, and you got the little little dude that goes in the little in the little slot there. Make sure the dude's in the slot. time you've fallen down this video. Okay. Dagger straight, homie. <laughs> oh, um, the other issue that wasn't on the video of the ride, but uh, has been an issue for John basically since he got this sled. I was just fucking around with the clutch, with the clutch clickers before I started videoing us on the ride because uh, this this machine you would go from you know zero to wide open throttle and it would just fall flat Blah. and I did it quite often and he bought the bikeman stage 3 clutch kit and you know the Y pipe and the V force 3 reeds and and the pipe or the silencer and bunch of shit for this thing and the problem got worse because it just added horsepower so I was playing with the clickers and on clicker setting one the stutter completely went away so that's a that's a good sign we need to lose a little bit of pin weight and we could probably go back up to clicker three and you know fine tune it but um, yeah I forgot to mention that but that was done as well to adjust your clickers you'll see there's numbers on them there's numbers all the way around this hole and there's a mark no there's a mark on the outside of the hole and there's numbers on the actual bolt you will loosen this side don't take it off just loosen it push it out till you can turn that bolt to the correct number that you're looking for and do all three they all got to be the same but that was also done so here's that guy I'll set you up here um, and we'll, put, we'll throw on all the panels uh, there will be a couple connectors so, here, so 
가다가 잠시 There you go, you can kind of see Get these connectors up out of the way First things first, I suppose Is this surround that all the bottom tabs are, are into the bumper correctly so that way it's all you know, you know it's all solid it's not floppy you're gonna take you your uh, t25 torx and it's got now remember I forgot this many times in a fire up your machine and get engine code. This sensor's got to be plugged in once you get it all down there. Sensor's got to be plugged in. If your air sensor's not plugged in, it uh, throws a code. As soon as you start it, it says engine, engine, we're going to die. Something like that. So don't forget about that. Make sure your wires are up where you can access them. clip into that surround that we just put on and I like to lift it gently as I push it back that way all your your fastener there's a, a bracket inside of here you want it on top of the panels below it right you don't want it underneath uh, then the last four fasteners are uh, identical you got one here one here cluster this one plug here is for your headlights um, this plug here goes on the back of your cluster make sure it clicks into place and you put the bottom end in first two fasteners right here and one. Oh, you saw that I had to use two hands I was trying to do it one handed but you know Side panels. There's this one. Side panels pretty straightforward. Hook the top one in, lift it up, push the bottom two, slide it down. There we go. Other panel. Yeah, if you guys haven't dealt with Rose tributing before, check them out. 
Like where I am in Northwest Territories, just about anything you orders, you know, two, three weeks away. Royal Distributing, my mailbox, you know, eight, ten days. And I, I mean, for some of you that might be like, holy fuck, eight, ten days. Here, that's, that's decent. That's, that's fucking decent. <laughs> Throw the spare belt up here on the hook. And so I suppose that means break in this new belt here for, for John so that when he gets back he can just fucking hit it. I guess uh, I'll take this thing for a ride. Maybe not today, but, but uh, yeah. And uh, now John can see what's happening to his machine when he's not here. So... I think that's going to be it for today. Uh, till next time, have a gooder, folks.